Welcome to Weekly Digest, where we highlight the work of ministers of government as they push the administration's development agenda. Picking up from where we left off last week, Albaistang youths are excited for the opportunity to help their community by cleaning clogged drains in alleyways. These works were a commitment by Minister of Public Works, the Honorable Bishop Juan Agil, after seeing the stagnant drains during a visit to the community two weeks ago. The project is financed through the Ministry's Urban Roads and Drainage Program. Minister of Housing and Water, the Honorable Colin Kroll, participated in the Christmas tree light-up at Port Kaituma, Region 1. During his feature address, Minister Kroll assured residents of a reduction in air travel soon. We committed that we will remove the tax and the VAT charge on fuel that is coming into your region. That instruction has already been passed to the Commissioner General of Guyana Revenue Authority. So very shortly, you will see the administrative measures being put in place to ensure that charge is removed so that we can see the fuel price being brought down even further. A $500,000 commitment was also made to the Majakai Sports Committee. Minister Kroll, who also holds parliamentary responsibility for Region 1, conducted a gift distribution exercise on behalf of the Speaker of the National Assembly, the Honorable Manzur Nadir. Distribution was done in Bombay, Tobago and Smith Creek with the aid of parliamentary staff. Minister within the Ministry of Housing and Water, the Honorable Susan Rodriguez joined the Salvation Army Ghana Division to make Christmas special for some 1,500 senior citizens and less fortunate persons. I try to make a contribution every day. I try to touch one person every day. Try to make a difference in somebody's life. Even if I can't give them something tangible, at least I could listen, at least I could take a moment for them to tell me their troubles and I will listen. I think even more now, we should be trying to give back. Even from the little that we have, we have to share and we have to help humanity. Minister Rodriguez also made a personal monetary contribution for the purchase of 10 tablets for the organization's upcoming Christmas Angel Tree program. Individuals struggling with substance abuse will soon be able to access free treatment at the Hugo Chavez Center for Rehabilitation and Reintegration, located at Onvawat, West Coast, Burbese. Minister of Human Services and Social Security, the Honorable Dr. Vindya Pasad, said the center will be repurposed to cater for the implementation of a drug rehabilitation program. There's a mega program planned for that. I've spoken to my colleague, the Attorney General, and we are going to look at it in dealing with all the facets of drug rehabilitation, including the law and also rehabilitation in tandem. So we do take the whole issue of substance abuse very seriously. An announcement by Texella American University to give recognition to Coursera courses completed by Guyanese has been welcomed by Minister of Education, the Honorable Priya Manikchan. The minister said it is a positive move which ties into the PPPC's manifesto to deliver 20,000 online scholarships in five years. We are working with several universities, including the um, Indira Gandhi University, the um, University of the West Indies, the University of Ghana, to see how we can build out a program that will offer the 20,000 online, at least 20,000 online opportunities. Approximately 51,000 Guyanese are registered on the Coursera platform with 8,054 completing 32,912 courses from Ivy League and other recognized universities across the world. The Ministry of Agriculture has signed six major contracts valued at $525.3 million to purchase 17 pieces of equipment to enhance its drainage and irrigation works capacity. The equipment include two new long-reach hydraulic excavators, a new wheeled hydraulic excavator, and four new mini hydraulic excavators. Minister of Agriculture, the Honorable Zulfikar Mustafa, said the equipment will have a significant impact on the agriculture sector. We will go into the area to sign the contract so that the beneficiary themselves, we will give them a copy 
of the on-price contract so that they can help us also to monitor the work. People are making requests and we want to move the, uh, send these machines to various regions so that we can have a fleet of machines that we can have work done in various regions rather than to move machines centrally. Minister of Labour, the Honourable Joseph Hamilton on Tuesday, recognized 15 local businesses for their years of cooperation with the Central Recruitment and Manpower Agency, which facilitated employment to youths through these businesses. Minister Hamilton said the event will be an annual one. The employers who readily accepted those youths who were placed in jobs in your industries and entities. This token of appreciation which you shall receive today is a gesture designed to let you be aware of how valuable the ministry knows you are by offering those youths opportunities to be gainfully employed. It signifies that as employers, you view an investment in the human resources development. 95 employees of the Ghana Sugar Corporation Incorporated, Gaisuko, were honored for contributing 40 and more years of service to the sugar industry. Minister of Agriculture, the Honorable Zulfikar Mustafa, assured the awardees that the government is committed to reviving the sugar industry. We will revitalize Gaisuko. We will revitalize the community and we will ensure that Gaishuku once again prosper. With the planned reopening of several estates, Minister Mustafa said government will employ some 3,000 workers in 2021. You are the most, or you are our most valuable asset. It is you who keep our estate functional and productive. It is you who keep our machine in optimum conditions. It is you who manage all processes, whether you are a factory manager, electrical engineer, drainage pump operator, or cane harvester. Minister of Human Services and Social Security, the Honorable Dr. Vindya Pasad, installed three boards of guardians in Region 2 to review requests for public assistance. The boards will serve the North Essequibo, South Essequibo, and Pomeroon. Dr. Basad urged them to review and update the list frequently, keeping in mind the socio-economic circumstances of applicants to ensure those most in need benefit. The Board of Guardians is integral to the functioning of the ministry because you are the person who are out there, who know the community, who people have confidence in, but more importantly, you are able to not only reach out to them, but to reach out in a way where you can support them, you can make a meaningful intervention in their life, and you can get them to access the services of the Ministry of Human Services and Social Security. A promise made by His Excellency Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali on Wednesday last has been fulfilled by Minister of Housing and Water, the Honorable Colin Kroll, and Minister within the Ministry of Housing, the Honorable Susan Rodriguez, during a follow-up visit to Region 2. As a result of his intervention, in four, within four working days, we have arrived at this point where we will be distributing um, approximately 80 titles throughout the course of today. Minister Kroll said the activity is tangible evidence of His Excellency's commitment to developing a sustainable housing sector, as outlined in the PPPC's manifesto. Minister Rodriguez, meanwhile, noted the delays in housing will not be tolerated under the present administration. We want to ensure that when someone is given an allocation, that it is a serviced lot. And by that we mean it is one that you have access to. The ministers also participated in a sad-turning ceremony at Windsor Castle for the development of a new housing area. Senior Minister within the Office of the President with Responsibility for Finance, Dr. Ashni Singh, on Wednesday inspected two new scanners at the Ghana National Industrial Company Wharf, Lombard Street. The new scanners are part of the Ghana Revenue Authority's initiative to employ new technology to improve issues of integrity and efficiency. Dr. Singh was impressed with the new service. What we see here is in fact a brand new scanner that has been introduced, a barrel scanner that has been introduced. I think it's been in operation for only about a week, right? Yes, week. right. So this is a brand new container scanner that we've introduced, which has been in use only for one week. 
and which, as you have seen based on the demonstration, provides a very efficient means through which barrels and boxes and other parcels of similar size can be scanned in a far more efficient way than if these items had to be examined um, manually. Dr. Singh was joined by GRA's Commissioner General, Mr. Godfrey Stacia, and new Chairman of the Board of Directors, Mrs. Sisnarine Kaulasar. Earlier the same day, Minister Singh met GRA's senior staff and urged them to maintain the highest level of integrity in the delivery of service. I'm saying to you that you are to ensure that your staff understand that there is no tolerance for corrupt behavior. And this message must get out there. Harassment of taxpayers, Harassment of importers or others trying to conduct their business with the hope of getting some inducement will be condemned and dealt with in the harshest possible manner. And so I'm going to ask, I don't want to belabor this point uh, uh, for too long, but I want to say to you that it is a matter that we feel very strongly about at the level, at the highest level of government. Farmers of Clonebrook, Beehive and Ansgrove East Coast Demerara will receive assistance from the Ministry of Agriculture to boost their farming capabilities and ensure sustainability of their livelihoods. This assertion from Minister of Agriculture, the Honourable Zulfikar Mustafa, during a visit to those villages on Wednesday. As a government, we recognise the importance of agriculture to our country's development. We recognize the importance of agriculture to create, to create jobs, to create wealth, and to also secure us, get, give us food security in our country. That is why it is important to develop our agriculture sector. It is important to invest in our agriculture sector. And that is why we are here this afternoon to give you the kind of support. Relative to the Farms to Market project, the Minister said construction of roads to accommodate farmers in specific areas will begin next year. The Ministry of Health is advising travellers to ensure they take the correct COVID-19 test to be allowed entry into Ghana. Minister of Health, the Honourable Dr. Frank Anthony, said only travellers who have taken the reverse transcriptase polymerase chain reaction, RT-PCR, along with the other requisite stipulations, would be considered for entry into Ghana. Minister Anthony made these statements during Thursday's COVID-19 update. The PCR test must be done within a 72-hour time frame upon the passenger's arrival at any of Ghana's ports of entry. Some travelers who would go to their labs uh, to get this test done and sometimes uh, the labs tell them that they are doing RT-PCR, but when they use the term RT-PCR, in a lot of cases, it refers to rapid test PCR. That is an antigen test, and that's not the one that we require. Minister of Public Works, the Honorable Bishop Juan Edgel, has registered his dissatisfaction with the sloth of contractors undertaking the majority of the hinterland road projects for Region 10. The minister addressed those contractors at the Wutuka Guest House in Linden on Friday. I must see evidence of work being done on every project between now and Tuesday. Contractors don't come and tell me by the 2nd of January they start in, when you have a commencement date of the 4th of December. 18 days of work has been lost. Contractors have been reminded that they must fulfill their contractual obligations so that they can be in good standing for future government contracts. Minister Edgel's meeting was preceded by inspections of a number of projects along the linden Susdike Highway, particularly the roadworks at Haruni, Kurukuru, and the entrance of St. Cuthbert's Mission. The Ministry of Housing and Water, through the Central Planning and Housing Authority, hosted a mass house lot allocation exercise under the Dream Realized theme. 
The exercise began on Friday and was completed by Saturday evening. Minister of Housing and Water, the Honourable Colin Kroll, and Minister within the Ministry of Housing and Water, the Honourable Susan Rodriguez, both addressed the eager recipients. Through the policies of His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali, more than 1,000 persons will leave here and throughout the course of the next of these two days, that is today and tomorrow, at least more than 1,800 persons will leave here with an allocation of a plot of land. The odds were against us when we took office in August of this year. People had lost confidence in government, people had lost confidence in the Ministry of Housing, because by the previous administration's own admission, they had only allocated 7,000 house lots in five years. Just think about that for a moment. And in our first four months in office, we will be allocating half of that. We wrap up this week of activities with a Christmas toy distribution exercise in Middle Road, Le Penitence. The exercise was conducted by a minister within the Ministry of Housing and Water, the Honorable Susan Rodriguez and her team, Saturday morning. This is just the first of many of my visits in my official capacity to this, this community. And there's going to be development that will come to Middle Road and development that will come to this community and Sideline Dam and Yarrow Dam. So we have a lot of things to look forward to um, in the coming months and in the coming years. That's it for this edition of Weekly Digest. For these and other government-related information, do log on to our website, dpi.gov.gy, and our social media platforms as well. Goodbye.